This video is brought to you by our friends at joinyaa.com. If you're looking for some great car buying advice, joinyaa.com. And of course, our friends at BF Goodrich Tires, who provided the most excellent tires that we're about to swap out on these old trucks. Previously on Go Big, we were driving from here, just outside of Golden, Colorado, all the way to Moab to the White Room Trail. If you want to class up something immediately, Trust me on this. I have focused on safety, security, and functionality. So for some people, that's about half a car payment right there. <laughs> We're here on the White Rim Trail, and I think there is no more beautiful road in the entire world. Yeah, there are like three cars that went off the road here. Wait, what? Yes. Okay, the caddy made it. Made it? 400 and something miles in. 99th bourbon. Now this is properly redneck edition because I've got red dirt. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna show you how to do this very simply on a budget. I spent $38 to create my camping spot inside of the Escalade. I have my tools, I have emergency equipment for changing tires. I have my carpet, that's very important because this is classy. See right there, this is my, my entry. And then let me quickly fold it down so I can make my bed and show you how that works. Hey guys, as you know, it is that time of year, the time of year where we start selling some of our long-term test fleet and to do that, we've brought our old auction site back from the dead. TFLbids.com is back. And this week we're gonna be selling not only our Suburban that we use for the Go Big video series, but also a pretty cool and pretty rare Kia Sorento. First generation, unknown off-roader that will surprise you. So go check out TFLbids.com and get yourself a beautiful Suburban at no reserve or a first generation Sorrento. More trucks to come on TFL Bids. <sighs> Just a little bit of dirt. This is the party trick for this truck, and I'll show you why. Look at the entryway. This is big. It's almost like E-Series van big. And because of that, it's very easy to load and unload, and it's very easy to sleep in. Okay, it's not quite as classy as Andre's setup, I'll admit. And certain people are gonna be staying in a rooftop tent, which is great when the coyotes come, because coyotes can't figure out ladders, right? Mm -hmm. But in my case, I'll be in a solid motorhome, basically. Basically, it's a motorhome. And it's one that has a very flat floor. Look how flat that is. Once I set up my cot, I'll be almost level. Uh, Ian, the camera didn't stick. I present to you simple elegance. Open up the barn doors of the Suburban and you'll find a sleeping bag. And that is the end of the list of things I've done to the Suburban. It's camping. What, 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 what do you need to set up? We're gonna be here for like nine hours. I'm getting lightheaded. So like I said, I have some emergency equipment right here next to me. This is the basic pad, sleeping bag. I brought this from home. This is where I spent my big money. First, order eliminator. This is great because this still th smells like cigars and cigarettes. I, I admit I was really jealous of Andre getting the really pimped out ride. 
Honestly, I don't care how it smells either because it reminds me of my dad's car. He smoked cigars and stuff. My second investment is this. It's a little, actually, window net. Let me show you how this works. I also brought in my old cot because I'm big enough in this vehicle to sleep on a full cot, which means unlike every other person in this party, I'm gonna be the only one who's actually comfortable. So I'm gonna roll down my window just, just a little to get some fresh air. And then I put this fancy net. So this is for bugs, against bugs, and also, uh, yeah, so I can keep my window cracked right there. And I have another one for the other side. And just to add good measure, if you look over there, see that pink candle? I'm gonna light that puppy up tonight. And this vehicle's gonna smell like class. And now that my simple home is built, I have the best piece of equipment you will ever see. I plug it in. And magically, <laughs> look at this. Okay, I'm impressed. At least with the disco ball. Really? Are you gonna have enough room to stretch all the way out? Uh, it's unlikely. So you'll have to probably go... Uh, I, I, I need to go diagonal. Well, at least it looks match the smell now. <laughs> I also have scent. I, I sprayed. Yeah, I can tell. I brought a candle. And so did the car. That has love scent <laughs> uh, if you need it. You're welcome. This is great. I love the disco ball. That is definitely going to be something new, a standard at TFL. In fact, I want Roman to drive every car with that. <laughs> Can we all agree? Say aye. 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 Boys, are you ready to eat? Uh, ready to eat, Andre. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to take a little while, but I, I do have my kitchen with me. Is that my kitchen or is that your kitchen? This is my kitchen. I brought it in the Escalade. Oh. What? What are you talking about? I have the same kitchen. That well, everybody has... It's just similar. <laughs> that might green and old and tattered has uh, <laughs> all over it. Let's see. We have iced tea, chips ahoy, ice. Where, where are the dogs? Oh, there, oh, there they are. So I've got fire going guys. I've created fire and now I'm gonna create dogs. Uh, are there wild animals around here? Yes. Yes. Well, <laughs> do they like hot dogs? Uh, the cows probably not, but the coyotes yes. We have a spatula. Alright, so unlike those cavemen, I actually brought an inverter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up the engine, which will pollute everything, tough luck for them, and I'll be able to boil water. And that is my strategy, right? So, and because this vehicle is so efficient, I should only go through a gallon or two of fuel in order to make a cup of hot water. There we go. Ah, this should be on. All right. Um, it's not on. I guess we'll put ketchup on it, you know that. Is that toasting or burning? Both. Mostly burning. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it doesn't look very good, does it? Oh man, what are you gonna do? Well, welcome to the Escalade at night. This is uh, a party place. I was a little concerned because I thought that the Escalade area here would not be tall enough or long enough for me. I'm just over 6'2", but it is. Um, I kind of exaggerated about how much space I have. Now, I'm on a cot, bear in mind, but if I, it's, it's a little bit lower than I thought it would be. Also, Roman decided to be a great idea to pack our large cooler inside here. I think Tommy hid his teddy bear in here somewhere as well. Great. Oh, yes. Perfect. Got the sleeping bag. Got the spare tire to bonk my head on. All right. I gotta crawl in here. And I have my area here for... Well, my extra sleeping bag, 
my tools are here, second pillow, a hat. Actually, I'm a very happy camper. To be honest, there's one thing I kind of didn't take into account. Let's see if I can, so see that? That's the um, spare tire, which is supposed to, it's built to go in here. You can see it clearly, it's supposed to fit. Um, but because it's a larger diameter tire and a brand new one, A, it won't fit. B, this covering, um, which is right here, won't uh, go over it. And C, brand new tire rubber has a very, very pungent smell. So the entire interior of this vehicle now smells like a discount tire. Now that we're alone, I can officially tell you this is going to be a pretty uncomfortable night. <laughs> I should have got some kind of mattress pad or something. Uh, actually, the floor, though, is extremely long. Even at six feet tall, I have plenty of room. And look at this up here. I got a little lock button so I can lock myself in. Pretty cool. And uh, yes, so that's a little bit obnoxious. Let me turn this off. Okay. Okay, this is better. This is better. Oh, this is good. My path feels great. The sleeping bag is good. This is just right. I can get some great rest. And tomorrow, continue the trip into the outdoors. Yes. Whew. Good night. All right, well, it's quite late in the middle of the night and um, things are going okay, but I have noticed a fatal flaw in the Suburban. And that is there's a pillow, right? Kind of get your bearing. You see that black line? That is a metal hinge, which pokes you right in the middle of the back. Um, it was extremely cold last night, and, um, I smell like a rubber shoe, but, um, yeah, those are the positives. So, it was successful, I didn't get beaten by a snake or eaten by a bear, I suppose those are the positives. And yeah, I think the biggest adventure was trying to get up and get to the bathroom because I forgot how low the roof is versus how high my cot is. It's my own fault, but yeah, <sighs> survived. We're all set. I'm all set. You may be saying, oh, that's silly. Nathan's being silly, but I'll tell you, this is functional. I don't have long, luxurious hair like everybody else. As such, I have to keep this important brain as warm as possible. And I found this, and even though I don't snowboard, because that's what this is what you guys wear apparently, um, this is extremely comfortable in what I consider to be fairly frigid conditions. <sighs> wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. What are you? What are you? What are you wearing? Don't worry about what I'm wearing. What time is it? It's morning. My mat deflated a little. <laughs> so I, it wasn't the best of nights, I must say. I can't put the thing that I inflated on camera. But the good news <laughs> is that you look like you're really cozy. Well, I wouldn't call the food on this trip spectacular. My dad was in charge of the, the shopping and he bought like nine pieces of bread. You know, we're making it work. So we had, um, 
plenty of potato chips, but, but not hot dogs and PBJ. Mom, you know what would be a game changer right now? Uh, hot tea. Yeah, and an egg. And an egg. Maybe a strip of bacon. That would be a game changer. We should have thought of that. Mm. But you were in charge of the food. I spent like a hundred bucks. What happened? I forgot we had five big guys. It's 2022. A hundred bucks will get you an apple. <laughs> yes, true. Clearly. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Inflation has also hit the camping scene. Um, so, Tommy, we got to decide uh, who uh, had the best overlanding rig. How do we do that? Well, let's go ahead and head on out back down the trail yeah. and come up with the conclusion. But how do we pick it? I mean, you're going to pick yours, Nathan will pick his, Andrea will pick his. I don't think Nathan's going to pick his. Yeah, he'll pick his. He's not going to yeah, pick, he'll his. pick his. No, oh, he's sick of the suspension. No, no, no. How about uh, me and our videographer, Ian Pickett? Okay. low range first gear making this pretty gnarly descent now this is when you really want a vehicle that's in perfect mechanical condition when you're navigating the side of a cliff one of the problems about having the largest hood amongst these three is the fact that it's hard to see over <laughs> it's not that bad actually I've had worse Nathan I did not appreciate you waking me up this morning well I wanted to do something else but we wouldn't be allowed to film it well, but now I'm having a disco party and I'm being followed by uh, mountain bikers. I can't see anything now. All right, I'm coming up. I'll give you some help. You're looking good. Yep, just like that. A little bit right, a little bit right, straight. Now that way. Stop, stop. That is very hairy. That TRX is wide. That trailer is pretty wide. That's uh, difficult. Hug, hug the wall, hug the wall. Looking good. Well, that was kind of hairy. Let's see with the trailer. Just have to be a little bit careful in the Suburban here as well. This is the area where go big is, Nathan, help you out over here. It gets pretty, pretty is uh, bad. Perfect, that's great. It's a high hood. High hood. It's a very high I hood. I would say so. Yeah. You're good. Okay. Andre, cut harder right. Much harder right. Much harder passenger. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I'm glad Tommy is spotting me because otherwise, otherwise I would be falling down a cliff. I can't even imagine what Nathan and Tommy are thinking in those big SUVs. Nathan's uh, excursion was a little big for that section. I'm glad I wasn't driving that puppy. By the way, I wanted to show you, Let's see if you guys can see. Oh, there's a Toyota coming, guys. Uh, He's gonna pull over at this spot right there. He'll pull over by you, Tommy. Yes, this is after waiting a moment or two or three or six. 10 4. A lot of dust. Very hard to see through. But it makes it that much more entertaining. We did air down the tires a little bit, so we've got a bigger contact patch. And let's see how it performs on this little articulated section. All right, here we go. Just taking it super slow. 
gets in the ground clearance just a little bit. And into the sandy wash, four wheel drive low, working like a dream. Now this apparently has a G80 locking rear diff. I'm not sure how locking it is anymore to be completely honest with you. All right. <laughs> this thing weighs a lot. You can really feel the heft when you're going up and over rocks and stuff. No problem. Okay. 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 Just going down. Just going down. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, good. We got the sandy wash, and of course, videographer Ian is like, "Go fast!" And I'm like, ah, "Two hundred and eleven thousand miles of my suburban. I'm not going to be taking this fast." Uh, and especially because there's like a slightly weird clunk coming out of the left front suspension. I do not want to end up with a broken ball joint out here. So, I'm just going to kind of cruise through this nice silty sand as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. And just like that, I think we are through. one of those sections that I really like because I love pounding on it and getting sideways if possible on loose sand. I love it. But Tommy's taking it real careful because he wants his vehicle to actually make it back to Boulder. And I'm pretty sure that this Ford is tough enough to where it won't hurt it. So I might actually open it up a little bit. Okay, the rocks are right where I'm standing and then after you get past here it's all soft sand, okay? Rocks. I care. Big old Ford. It's like rocks. Whatever. Little so deep sand. It's not happy with right now. All nine and a half cylinders are pushing. Woo. Nathan, go slow. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't quite handle like a rally car. But it likes to bump. <laughs> oh. Who needs a spleen? They're overrated. continues as I go through the canyon. Let's see if I can get myself up here. Oh yeah. Ooh, I gotta slow down. Oof. That's a little bit bumpy. That's a little bit, but whoa. Yes, I need more ground clearance. Oh. I must say, as much fun as we had with our modifications of these vehicles, the only thing we did to really make these better off-road are the tires and these BFG KO2s. They are some of the best in the industry. You can run them into rocks and boulders and ravines and they just they just take it. They put up with it. I know if we ran these vehicles on the stock tires we bought them with, we'd be spending a lot of time fixing spares until we well, ran out of spares, but these KO2s provide such a great peace of mind. Air them down a little bit and the ride becomes, well at least in the Suburban, incredible. All right, come on, straight on. Straight. I'm not gonna let you go off the cliff, don't worry. Straight. Yep, that's good. Yep, just like that. Good. Perfect line. Uh, yep. Yep, still looking good. I'm often when I go over these, you know, all I see is wood. The river.
is where I wish we were doing our future series. Go small. <laughs> I'm gonna take it super easy through here because there is a massive cliff to the left of me. Nathan, we'll have your samurai when we need it. This might not even take the diet to rock. To be fair, the suburban isn't even all that huge compared to that excursion. I do not like shelf roads, even when, well, I mean, 30 feet is a big enough clip to probably kill you, especially in these old 90s brutes. Roof strength isn't what it once was, that's for sure. I think we're gonna make it through this really narrow bit. Right, so that way is the exit, gentlemen, and our videographer has selected the best budget off-roader. Okay, uh, what is that? Well, Andre, it is your... Yes. Wait, Ian voted for the Cadillac? Yes, and I completely <laughs> and utterly disagree. I think it has no low range, the least amount of room, and looks the goofiest on the trail, so I'm just gonna say no go. Uh, Nathan, I love your truck, uh, but it's way too expensive to make a budget. Oh, Overlander. So oh, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna oh, give. You go with Tommy, are you? I'm gonna give the cookie to Tommy. But yes. you know what? But you know what? You're all winners. You all get a cookie. Congratulations, <laughs> can gentlemen. I, can I tell you who I voted for? Because it's not me. Who did you vote for? Him, Andre. Me? Yes. Really? Why? Because I've driven his vehicle. Aside from the fact that this, it smells nostalgic, and I'm the only one who likes the smell of stogies. I love the way his drives. It drives really well off-road for a vehicle that doesn't have low range. It's very comfortable. The power is excellent. Very good air conditioning, by the way. Thanks. I mean, it's a really good vehicle for the money. All right, and, and which would you choose, Tommy? And you know what I voted for? Who? Tommy's. Oh. I think I love the Cadillac, but Nathan, the ground clearance is not there. Um, I think the toughest vehicle here is the GMC. Well, I voted for the Cadillac. What? <laughs> I like that the most too, Nathan's right. It's the most comfortable, it's the fastest, it's got the best sounding engine. I think the one thing we can agree on, though, yeah, is that nobody for it. And this was, you yeah. know, the most off-road capable of all of them. Yeah, that's yeah. the irony. But that's the thing about overlanding is that it's not super hardcore off-roading unless you want it to be, right? If this had the diesel, I'd be Ford all day. But with this V10, oh, this thing would ride even worse with the diesel. And the XLT, uh, I don't know. All right, there you have it, guys. Uh, the stinkiest car here by far wins the budget. Best overlanding rig. Congratulations, Andre. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching us on another fun and epic TFL No Pavement Needed video series. This time we went big at the wrong time when gas went through the roof, but nevertheless, what we spend on gas, we certainly saved in the vehicles that we chose. See you guys next time. From Moab, for all of us, ciao.